In this screen recorded video, I'd like to show you the tools that I like to use with Spark Motion to help my athletes uh, learn to strike a soccer ball better and to maybe give you some pointers when you're looking at that skill as to a couple simple things to consider, but that might make a very meaningful difference in, in how you evaluate somebody striking a ball. So the first thing I like to do is just sometimes watch at real speed. And I may do that several times and mainly just to get a sense of what's going on real time. I feel like if we look at things in slow motion too soon, we can sometimes lose just the whole uh, movement pattern as a skill. So the next thing I'll do is I like to look at it in half speed. At half speed, I just get a, a sense of, is he winding up well? Is he planting well? Is he striking well? And then finally we'll go to frame by frame. Frame by frame, now I can watch the subtleties, and this is where I start to use some of the other tools that I, that I value quite a bit from Spark Motion. Uh, the first tool that I find very helpful is just simply the drawing tool, and what I'm looking for is, I like this, this arcing motion. It shows me that somebody is going to strike the ball properly. It shows me that they've got a nice wind-up, and I'm looking for that. If, for example, we've got something and it's too vertical, then we're not getting that nice wind up that I want when we load. And I'll show you in a moment a two vertical uh, version of this. Next set of tools that I really like to use for spark motion is these arrows. In part because I like to see that the player is looking straight over the ball and has that uh, head down. But also it's nice for me whether I'm explaining it to a player or trying to show them to show how this opposite arm wind up is occurring. So if we watch that, as he is about to plant on his right foot, you see that he's already wound up. So that right arm winds up well before he's about to plant. So as he's planted, he's now got this wonderful abdominal load, thoracic extension, and so that allows him to really explode through the ball nicely. And if we watch that full speed, put it right in the back of the net. So again, the two keys that I consider you to always look at when you're evaluating somebody striking the ball is, can they actually stop? Can they plant on that right foot? So what we're considering is, can this player here, can he actually land properly while he's winding up? So it's a, it's a balance. It's a strength. It's a stability. It's, can he stop? And then the second is, can he wind up through his abdominals to appropriately collapse through the ball and put some force behind it? So let's take a look at a second player, and, uh, and we can see some of these deficits that this player doesn't have. So again, using the arrow tools that I like to use, we see that he starts to wind that hand up well before he lands. He's looking straight over the ball. He's got a wonderful opening, great chest wall, and, and we can be pretty confident that he's going to get a nice strike here with his left foot. So his right foot can tolerate that load as he drives through and gets that nice strike. The other thing that I that I like is he has that arcing like motion from the wind up. Not so much from the head but from the abdominal wall. So now let's watch him uh, strike it with his opposite foot. So as we watch him strike it with his opposite foot what I'd like to show you is when I'm filming I use the bullseye many times just simply to find the center of the screen such that as I'm filming we'll see that the bullseye stays in the center of the screen so that I know that whatever I capture is going to be in the center of my screen and not on one side or the other. So just a helpful tip that I find to be very helpful. Uh, I also use the bullseye for a variety of other things, but, but for filming it's, it's great. Now let's take a look at this opposite arm. In the previous uh, example, that arm was already wound up. What we see here is <clears throat> he's already moving towards striking the ball, and he's clearly not winding up. Uh, and so the skill of landing on this leg obviously is not, he doesn't either have enough confidence, strength, or skill to get an appropriate comfort zone to let this right arm open up and fully get his load uh, such that he can explode through the ball. So as we watch him at this point, you know, he's in trying to find power not through his whole trunk, but through driving at the ball. Uh, with his leg, which won't nearly be as successful. The other thing is we don't see that arc 
through the chest, as I described in the others, but instead what we see is more this straight line through the body chest wall, which again is going to not be a successful strategy. So if we watch him strike it, what we see is a very interesting pattern where he doesn't get much load and therefore doesn't generate much force. And this is the kind of situation where this player probably has been told to go out and practice a multitude of times with his right foot, strike it more, just work on kicking it, where the real approach ought to be teaching him to land and decelerate on his left leg while he's opening up appropriately with his right arm. You might skill those movements in the gym well before you'd ever start to have him practice striking the ball more. And if, if you do that appropriately, I think you'd find that his ability to strike with his right foot would change dramatically. So those are the tools that I like to use uh, when I use Spark Motion to evaluate striking a soccer ball. I hope you find that useful and would love to hear or see through other screen recorded videos what, what you like to use.